Have you butchered a rabbit and now you're wondering how do you cook it? Tonight I'm going to share with you one of my favorite rabbit recipes and my favorite ways to cook it. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name is Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Um, I had a lot of requests recently to do some more cooking videos with rabbit. So tonight I'm going to share with you one of my favorite recipes for rabbit, and that's rabbit spaghetti. Um, I'm starting with a whole rabbit here, and I'm going to go ahead and cut this up. All right, so now that I've got my rabbit all cut up, um, I've got my two back legs right here. I've got my two front legs. I've got the two loins from the upper part of the rabbit there, and I've got my back. I need to cook all this meat before I can do anything else. Now I'm going to do that in a pressure cooker. Um, if you watch my videos before, I do have um, instructions on how to use a stovetop pressure cooker. Today I'm going to be using an electric pressure cooker. Uh, this is a Cary Smart Canner cooker. Works fantastic, much quicker than using like a crock pot or baking this in the oven or just cooking it in a pot of boiling water. Pretty easy. I'm just going to throw my rabbit in there, all the pieces. And then, of course, you need some liquid inside there, so I'm going to use a can of chicken stock that I canned up a while back. If I can get it open. I'm just going to dump a jar of chicken stock in there. That'll give it a little bit of flavor. And then I'm going to close the lid, move the vent on top to the airtight setting, and hit pressure cook. Set my timer for 25 minutes. If you are doing this in a stovetop pressure cooker, then you want to use it, uh, you want to cook it at 10 pounds pressure for 25 minutes. That's basically what this is going to do. Then we're going to start this. So this is going to take a minute or so to get up to heat, up to pressure, and then it'll start counting down. And when it's done, we'll come back and we'll show you the next step. All right, so the rabbit's finished cooking here, and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take it and uh, take a fork and kind of shred it off the bone. And I need to get about uh, two cups of shredded rabbit together, so I'm just going to kind of shred it up here with my hands, throw it in this bowl here. And uh, I don't guess there's any reason you need to watch me do all this. I will get it all shredded up, and then whenever I get that finished, I will come back and uh, I'll show you the next step. All right, so I've got my rabbit all shredded up here, and uh, let's see, I've got all my other ingredients all kind of together right here. Uh, first thing I've got is a uh, about a pound of cooked spaghetti, and when I cooked this, I broke it in half before I cooked it, so it's in a little bit smaller pieces, a little bit easier to manage that way. Um, I'm going to add to this uh, two cans of cream of mushroom soup. Get those added in real quick. Next, we're going to add in um, a pretty decent sized onion diced up. Uh, this is yellow onion. We're going to add in our shredded rabbit. That's about two cups, maybe just a tad bit over. We're going to add in, um, I'm going to put black olives in there. Um, this recipe kind of changes up a little bit every time I make it. Um, sometimes I make it with uh, bell peppers, sometimes with banana peppers. This time I'm going to use some green chilies and I'm going to use black olives in here. So we're going to add um, two small jars of sliced black olives, about two small cans of um, diced green chilies. And then we're going to add our cheese. And uh, this is about two cups of cheese. I'm going to add all but just, oh, maybe half a cup, maybe a little over. I'm going to save that to top it with. I'm going to stir all this stuff together real quick. Okay, as I'm stirring this together, it, you know, it's a little bit tricky to kind of stir all this stuff together. It's a little bit on the dry side, so I'm going to need to add a little bit of liquid. What I'm going to do is use my um, chicken stock that I cooked the, the uh, rabbit itself in and probably add about a cup. You don't want this to be real dry. You want it to be a little bit on the, um, the, the moist side, but not soaking wet either. And adding a little bit of liquid makes it a little bit easier to stir all this stuff together. And this looks about right. Like I said, you want it to be um, a little bit on the damp side, a little bit moist, but not um, incredibly wet. Let me bring this a little bit closer to the camera. I'll kind of, hopefully you'll be able to see this a little bit and it'll make sense. So again, it's not, you know, it's not wet, dripping wet, but it's not real dry either. And I'm probably going to add just a little bit more chicken stock. Probably in total, you're going to need about 
um, maybe a cup of chicken stock in there. If you don't have a cup of chicken stock, you could use water if you needed to, but chicken stock is going to make it uh, taste a little bit better. Okay, I've got everything pretty much stirred together here. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of seasoning salt, probably somewhere around a teaspoon of seasoning salt to it. A little bit of cayenne, not too much because my wife doesn't really like the spice all that much. So we're going to go light on the cayenne, spice it up a little bit more if you like it a little bit more spicy. Um, a little bit of salt, probably uh, about a teaspoon of salt. And some fresh black pepper. And I'm going to give it another stir or two and incorporate all that in there. All right, now that I've got this all stirred up, I'm going to transfer this over to a casserole dish and just spread it out in there. This is a pretty big casserole. It's going to fill this dish pretty much all the way up. And then we're going to top it with my remaining cheese. And I don't think I saved enough cheese. I'm probably going to have to get a little bit more out, quite a bit more out. So let me do that real quick. All right, I've got it all topped with cheese. Now we're just going to throw it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. If uh, you're, you know, it starts to dry out a little bit, check it after about uh, 30 minutes roughly. If it's starting to dry out, you might want to cover it with some foil or something like that. I usually don't have a problem with that, but just uh, you know, check it just to make sure. So let me stick this in the oven and uh, we'll come back when it's finished, show you the finished product. All right, um, here we go. Finished product right out of the oven, fresh, hot, ready to eat, smells fantastic. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, as always, God bless.